All right, what are some of your likes? Uh, ghouls. Son of a bitch. What are you talking about yeah, now? funny little green ghouls. Go the year was 2019. I was watching the Ubisoft E3 conference, and at the beginning of the conference, Ubisoft had just unveiled two new trailers to Watch Dogs Legion. Basically, they were putting a blanket over a mediocre game by promising players that they could beat up enemies as an old lady. It somehow worked. Thinking, how could you possibly follow that up? I wondered what was coming up next. It's... it's... Mac? From It's Always Sunny? Okay... He then went on to pitch his workplace sitcom about a video game studio making an MMORPG with a zany cast. To be honest, it looked bad. And it was on Apple TV, which really pissed me off because the idea of Apple having its own streaming service pisses me off. There was a second of fleeting hope though, because Danny Pudi was in it and I like him in Community, but that was it. It was so bad that I forgot about it until the summer of 2021. I was scrolling the YouTube homepage when I saw a compilation of scenes of Danny Pudi's character Brad. The scenes were actually pretty funny. And his character was the opposite of Abed, which I really liked. He was this twisted capitalist guy who seemed like the evil devil on the shoulder of the main cast. So after seeing that, I went to go check out the show. I loved it. I was hooked. I watched every episode that had been released in one night. I was raving, so I immediately went to go see what people were saying online, and while it had good reviews, no one was talking about it. No one. Even to this day, look up Mythic Quest video essay, and there's like next to nothing. Which is crazy because there are genuinely great things that this show is doing with storytelling through television. I want more people to talk about this show, or at the very least, see it. Because Mythic Quest is one of the best sitcoms that no one talks about. As a quick summary of the show, Mythic Quest is a workplace sitcom that takes place at a fictional video game studio that's developing the MMORPG Mythic Quest. The show is about its cast dealing with the many issues that come with developing a game. The show is basic, it's not telling an original concept is just pushing the tropes that come with a workplace sitcom through the lens of a video game studio, but it tells the stories it's trying to tell flawlessly, with some genuinely good filmmaking and character writing. Before I gush about the show for a long time, I'll go through some of the things that I didn't really like, or things that I feel like you might not like. First and foremost, the show is on Apple TV, so in order to watch it, you have to have an Apple TV account. There is no other way to watch it. Just on Apple TV. Secondly, the show is not an accurate depiction of what it's like to work at a video game studio. It tries to depict real gamers, and many times it fails and gets a little cringy. Also, its transition b-rolls are straight up just clips of famous pre-rendered video game cutscenes, and it's kinda off-putting. It relies on corny video game humor every once in a while, but those are a few and far between. You'll find more good jokes than bad ones. Lastly, the biggest draw away I can see for many people is that it's more of a dramedy than a comedy. It has many dramatic and serious moments and isn't trying to be a comedy every second. I know that some people don't like that, but if you're into that sort of thing, I'd argue that this show accomplishes it in some of the best ways in modern television. And that's about it for things I didn't like. Alright, let's gush about it. The character writing in this show is simply incredible. I mean, the show is produced by Charlie Day, Megan Gans, and David Hornsby, so that quality of writing and humor you are getting from It's Always Sunny is what you're getting here. Each character gets their moment to shine both comedically and dramatically. There were characters I didn't like at the beginning, but by the end of the season, I was rooting for every character to achieve their dreams. Even the characters who are dicks end up feeling incredibly real. Every main cast member is so three-dimensional and layered that you go on an emotional roller coaster for each of their arcs, which is quite the feat for a cast of eight people, especially because they're only 22-minute episodes. And don't get me wrong, it isn't rushed either. There are full scenes dedicated to us just sitting with the characters at times, and the arcs have yet to go stale. With three seasons, the show manages to show you new sides of each character in every season. I can't fully credit this to the writers, because this is executed flawlessly through the show's acting and directing as well. And oh my 
god, the acting is so good in this show. So for this next bit, I kind of have to out myself really fast and mention that I was a theater minor. I know, I know, I apologize, but I promise you I'll try not to be annoying. But in the acting classes that I did take, we were taught to find something called opposites in a scene. Opposites refer to finding quite literally the opposite emotion of a scene. For example, in a scene between a bickering couple, you can't just play off the angry emotions of a character. You also have to play off the fact that the character loves their partner. This way you're adding dynamics to a scene and you portray a character that feels fleshed out. The actors in Mythic Quest are masterclasses of this. They portray their characters in a way where it feels like there's a world of emotion going on in their head that is more than just the lines that they are saying. Rob McElhenney, Charlotte Nickdow, and Danny Pudi especially flex as many times they act out full scenes without saying any words and you immediately understand what they are conveying. There's also an extra cast of characters who are doing amazing work, but that's part of something else later. All you gotta know is that the cast of this show is the real deal, and they make it look seamless, probably cause it is, since they have an incredible script to work from. The script of this show is, mmm, god, I love it. It's so clean, it knows exactly what it is, and what it wants to tell, and then after that it does a triple somersault onto a mat and just nails that shit tens all around. And while the show isn't an accurate depiction of what it's like to work at a video game studio, it does tackle the issues of the current news that comes out about a lot of different video game studios recently. It handles representation very well by not just forcing it down, but really blending it with the story in a way that feels natural. It'll make you both laugh, cry, and cheer, and that is especially apparent in what I like to call the other episodes. I'm going to quickly mention that the showrunners love to just play around with the TV show, trying different and new concepts with storytelling and filmmaking. It's like a playground for experts to just do cool shit. One of these concepts is the aforementioned other episodes. One episode a season, the show completely drops the overarching plot of the season, and tells a completely brand new story with a brand new cast. They all tie into the show somehow, but it's like watching a whole new short film. And that's what these episodes are. Short films. The quality in cinematography, effects, set design, acting, and writing becomes elevated as each of its directors just simply do what they're good at. Filmmaking. And I know this sounds like this could be an absolute bad idea. I mean, there are shows within recent memory who have tried this and failed spectacularly. But the show's episodic nature allows room to tell these stories without feeling like the pacing has been stalled. It feels out of nowhere, but in a good way. The episodes usually focus on character building, which in turn elevates the main plot. Oh, remember how I said that these episodes usually feature a different cast? Yeah, these new casts always feature celebrities that you'll probably recognize, and you'll watch them give performances that are genuinely incredible. Oh, you're leaving? Yeah. So soon? Yeah. We just started talking. Take care of yourself, okay? Okay, yeah, you too. I'm just saying, if you're a New Girl or a Nick Miller fan, you gotta check this show out, because this show will only just make you love Jake Johnson more. Oh, and one last thing, this show has a pandemic episode in season two, and that could have just been a huge cringe fest, but instead it manages to be the most raw depiction of pandemic depression I have seen in media thus far. I could talk about these episodes for an hour, and one day I just might, but I have so much more to talk about. I know that I mentioned the set design, production, and post-production elements that are elevated in the other episodes, but in the rest of the season, they are just flat out great. You can tell a lot of money went into this show and was spent well. The people who made this show seem like they had the creative freedom to make the kind of project they wanted to make. Shots feel thought out and dynamic using angles and lenses to amplify emotion and power dynamics. The editing is slick and does things that made me as an editor just replay scenes multiple times with my face to the screen saying, how the fuck did you do that? And the set pieces? I mean, just look at this. It feels expensive, dude. I cannot and will not shut up about this series ever. The author Brandon Sanderson once said that ideas do not make an author. 
authors make ideas work, and Mythic Quest is such a great example of this. For all intents and purposes, this show should not work. It's corny, it's stupid, it's unoriginal, and it panders to an audience that doesn't even want it. But the showrunners took a look at it and basically said, You have no idea how high I can fly. And proceeded to make a television series that was genuinely good. And I think that's what really excites me about it. Every episode, I'm genuinely appalled about how good they are at turning stupid concepts into good television. So if you have Apple TV, please give this show a look. It's on its third season with a fourth on the way, but I'd really like to see this show go until they feel like they're done with it. Keep an open mind and this show will tell you some really great stories and you'll get that feeling of close attachment to these characters that only great stories can pull off. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time in here, welcome on in. I make video essays about TV and video games and stuff that I just generally love. If this is your second time or a reoccurring viewer, welcome back. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to keep up to date with me, please follow me on Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time.